when they said cancer, it's not something anybody wants to hear, but when you're faced with it, you don't have a choice. The Lord must have thought I needed a, a challenge because he put that in my lap and I just had to get to the end of my journey. I had no clue, just went for my yearly mammogram and the doctor saw something he felt needed biopsied. I said, well, what could it be? He said, oh, it could be scar tissue. I didn't think to myself, well, I have no reason to have scar tissue. After it set in, I was like, that could come back cancerous. Of course, the two days until the biopsy, you're terrified, but everybody's like, oh, it's probably nothing, it'll be fine. Then you wait another two days for the results, and that was the worst two days probably of my life. You're at work and they say they'll call with the results and leave a message because I couldn't take the call right then, so I rushed home to call back. The doctor is on the other line and says, I have your biopsy results and it's cancerous and my heart's palpitating and I'm, you know, sweaty palms and I'm terrified, but what do we do now? Now I chose to do my chemo in Buffalo because I saw my oncologist there and I only had to have treatment every three weeks, so six times up to Buffalo. But radiation, of course, is every day. My oncologist knew of Dr. Hare, so he said, oh, sure, we'll just send him all the information. That's why I decided to have my radiation done here at the Radiation Center in Olean. Melissa came in and she was immediately one of those, you could tell, a very vivacious, kind person. We went through an exhaustive workup. We even had a multidisciplinary review at Roswell about moving forward and so forth, and everybody was on the same page regarding offering the benefit of radiation therapy because the idea of metastatic disease was essentially ruled out. Radiation therapy is an integral part of about 40% of oncologic patients and that are treated for curative intent, so it, it is a definitely a very necessary modality. Melissa was very enthusiastic, but at the same time realistic from the beginning of treatment. There was never an undercurrent of letting fear overtake her, never let her fortitude wane. Dr. Hare was very soft-spoken, very genuine, very concerned, always took his time with you, just always, always positive too. It was very refreshing. She happened to be one of those that you look forward to seeing every week because it was kind of uplifting even for the staff members. Support at home is probably a single number one factor clearly that probably allows patients to be comfortable with their treatment. Everybody was so supportive and you know you're gonna beat this and here for you and we'll get you through and all my family was amazing. My husband, my rock, because I couldn't have done it without him. Every day he would say, you know, you're gonna beat it. There's just no way you're not gonna beat it. We had excellent doctors and nurses. We'd have three or four appointments sometimes on the same day to get everything squeezed in. See the surgeon, see the oncologist, have chemo. Every few weeks you had to go to the heart doctor because the drugs are hard on your heart. I worried, but I don't remember really dwelling on it because I look at the positive. I'm sure our kids worried more than probably I know that they did. We're really family oriented. Well, you need family, you need all that support, first of all. There's always the Pink Pumpkin Project that's here in Olean that has been a godsend to me. The whole group are so giving and it's another family. You've made sisters and friends and you really need that love and support, I think, on a daily basis is what helps get you through. One of our committee members, Brittany Bachman, came to us and said, I know someone who's currently going through breast cancer and we need to get her a tote. Brittany filled out the nomination form and she took it to Melissa. I had a knock on my door, Brittany Bachman. She came in and she explained what the pink pumpkin was. I started to go through my tote, the amazing stuff, jewelry and a pillow and a blanket and a water bottle and notebook. You're given an envelope and it's a monetary gift, which I just was dumbfounded. I, I think I did start to cry because this organization doesn't know me and they're giving me this tote bag because I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. And we want people to understand that we receive the donations, we receive the scarves, we receive the hats. Those are handmade by individuals because they know we're going to help those in our community. We have helped over probably 600 now since its first inception the support groups that they have and all the functions. And Lynn especially has been just amazing. She is so supportive, the kindest and giving person.
Whenever we hear that somebody's mammogram is negative or they've finished their chemo, we're always so excited for them. After a scan, our, our whole family was at the doctor's office waiting down in the parking lot. And it was a good thing it was a good scan because they were all there. It's all part of the adventure. Good, bad, whatever, it's just all part of the adventure. Somebody that realizes I have something serious, I'm going to do everything I can for me and my family. Those are the people that seem to do the best and that was certainly the attitude Melissa took from the very beginning. I look at life differently every day as a blessing. I go out and look at the sky and just smile and be like, you know, I'm still here. If I can help other people and if I can tell my story and tell others, you just gotta fight. You just gotta be willing to give it your all. I want to thank you all for being a part of my journey and it wouldn't have been the same without all the support from everyone.